Hi, this is a video log of me optimizing my own subwoofers and uh, two speakers with multi-subwoofer optimizer. This program is really, really good. I'm using version 1.17. I'm recording this video about these types of devices like SHD series and Flex, which have uh, two inputs and four outputs. There are really, really good tutorials written by the NDC amazing guy who made this program and also some others like Jeff Mary. All of these tutorials are very nice and uh, I read through this whole tutorial. It's really big reading. In touch topics there are also some optimizing splices and all the other things. And then even a mini DSP website, there is a dual sub integration with mini DSP, which is actually quite a good tutorial I followed a year ago. But the problem with this tutorial is it is about one year old. So I'm making this video log just for myself to be able to remember what am I doing. Just for reference, this is what my setup looks like. In the room I have two subwoofers in each corner. And I have two speakers mounted like this. So the first part is uh, measurements in REV for MSO. I'm using Umic X 16 microphone array here. These measurements could as well be done with normal microphone by just moving it around. Here I have an advantage of putting the array in one place and taking all 16 measurements in one go. So it's going to be faster. Here I needed to set maximum measurements to 90 in uh, rev because otherwise it would not be able to fit four measurements times 16 microphones. Then uh, for the device itself, I am using a mini DSP ASIO driver. It's impossible to use Umic X without ASIO, so TOSLINK is the only output which you can use with normal mini DSP driver. ASIO for all the theoretically allows to combine different devices as well. Audio output from uh, Umic X is going via TOSLINK to the mini DSP SHD. Now going into the measurements themselves. I set up measurement for the left side. This is my naming. 20,000 Hertz. Acoustic reference output on TOSLINK 1. Reference output on TOSLINK 2. So it's left and right. 16 microphones and generate individual measurements. Set the length to 512 to have a little bit longer sweep. Checking levels. Okay, I needed to do some adjustment here. So I opened SHD plugin where you need to change the routing for every measurement. So I have Toslink input. So here I raised the master volume to minus 23 in this case, checking that there everything is on defaults. I only renamed the inputs, but everything else is straight after reset. So there are no PEQs, no crossovers, no nothing. Now this was a routing for the left speaker. Quickly taking measurement and moving on to the next. For the right speaker it's basically the same thing. Just needed to change the routing to the right speaker. And timing reference stays on the same right speaker as always. When doing the same for subwoofers, the only difference is that frequency range can be set to lower. In this case I set to 500, could be as well 300. And for the last subwoofer, the measurements take about 5 minutes to run. Now saving. Now exporting a measurements for MSO. Default settings are fine. Just specifying a folder. And here are all the measurements, including the averages. So I need to delete the averages because MSO doesn't need the averages. It will use the direct measurements. The next part is starting project in the MSO. So I just launch a program and start the import wizard. We need both subs and mains. Need to add the subwoofer measurements. It's as simple as selecting 
in this case 32 measurements for subwoofers using shift and control now the speakers notice no averages so this wizard is very good it's missing in the mini dsp tutorial because it wasn't there before so setting my two speakers and two subwoofers renaming works by pressing f2 I'm using a digit for the channel number in mini DSP. This is just for my own reference. Here I'm marking the MLP main listening position. The way I set up Umic X on a first array, the microphone 3 is the one which is best representing my main listening position. And it's also in the center. Again, this is just a note for myself. Here comes the tedious part of assigning every measurement to the position and uh, speaker. When measurements are associated, the next step is just going straight. The first measurement should be called baseline because it will be kept standard. I'm using 12 PQs per subwoofer, setting up a default graph, I use from 10 to 300 Hz on most graphs, and looking at how the data looks, setting some fixed limits for the y-axis as well. So optimization settings, minimize seat to seat variations as always. Target curve can stay default flat. It's actually easier this way. Here I'm setting criteria from a little bit below what I actually want to, I think I'll come back to this later, to 300 Hz. PQs usually are set to match the optimization limits, but uh, I will actually do it a little bit different. Maximum cut can be set to 30. Maximum boost to 3. Here, maximum Q value I use 8.6 using recommendation from Jeff Mary for lack of better understanding on my side. In constraints, I'm limiting the boost, but actually for cut, I don't see a reason to limit it at the moment. Here I made a mistake, I left the main listening position to 1, but I should have set listening position to 3, saving a project. There are a lot of things here which can be forgotten, and I will come back to it. Now I'm making some adjustments to the plots. I made thicker trace for the main listening position, but I did forget to set it correctly to be optimized for. Thankfully, the difference between position 1 and position 3 is quite minimal, so it doesn't matter so much in the end result. It's also important to set up application options where Mini DSP needs to be set up like this in my case. I'm using crossover bike wads as well, and SHD does not have input filters, so I need to use only the output 10 filters and 8 crossover filters. Now I also made a clone of the main configuration, which I'm actually going to be optimizing. Renaming the graph. In the graph options, again, changing the name. Access should be good already. In the data, I show the optimization curve. Now making an extra new graph. So I'm going to use this graph to estimate at which level should I optimize the subwoofers to. Again, optimization curve. In this graph, I'm using the four closest to the main listening position microphone locations for the left and right speaker. This shows me the best reference for where should the target level be set. Just fixing the scale and axis. As you can see, the default proposed target level is not bad. I want it to be a little bit too high, because then Dirac can bring it down afterwards. 
So what I don't want is I don't want some hole in between the main speakers and the subwoofers. And I also don't want Dirac to think that subwoofers are not strong enough to play louder than the main speakers. Now I can go and uh, set the reference level. Looking at this graph, in this case I almost don't need to change it, but it could be any level. Now making one more graph. I like to have a graph which shows the filters. Setting axis to be as all other graphs I use. Except the level on y-axis is different. Here I choose the four filter channels. That looks good. Just need to rename it. Here I was messing a little bit with naming to make it more pretty. Now I need to add a few more filters before running the optimization. Liquids Riley 24 dB per octave, fourth order. High pass and low pass. It is possible to let MSO to optimize these. But it works quite strange, so I end up fixing it to the value I want. In this case, I want 110 Hz crossover. Then, after crossover, I also added PEQs to the speakers. Here, the idea is to use them only under a crossover frequency, because above crossover, I expect Dirac to take care of it, but underneath crossover, Dira cannot optimize the subwoofer and speaker simultaneously, so I let MSO to do some optimization. And the PQs I apply is 5 piece per speaker, where I limit them only up to 110 Hz, which is my crossover frequency. And I do not allow any boosting at all, only cutting, with max Q the same as for subwoofers, around 8.6. Before running optimization, I am making a clone of this configuration, just to be able to go back to it in case I need to. Double checking options. Here in criteria, I actually want maximum frequency to be considered up to 300 Hz. You can't actually set to 300, so the maximum is 290. And the idea is that MSO can only use PEQs up to 200 Hz but it needs to consider optimization up to 300 to force it to have a better transition between uh, satellites and subwoofers. Is this the most optimal way to do it? I don't know, but that's the method I tried and it seemed to be working fine. After that, I just launched the optimization and uh, start monitoring the progress. Because I only have two subwoofers and uh, I forced it to consider frequency all the way to 300 Hz, while limiting PEQs to 200 Hz, I expect to have rather bad error values compared to those who have four subwoofers and uh, optimize the whole range only for subwoofers. But it's not about the error value, it's about what you see in the graphs to minimize the variation and then hopefully provide good enough base for Dirac to clean up the frequency response afterwards. Now they're just waiting. Sometimes I notice that if this optimization seems to get stuck, it's good to go in, stop it, and just change value of some of the PQs to mess it up and uh, let it try to optimize further. Again, I'm not sure what's the optimal way to do it. That's just something I tried and seemed to be working fine. It's always possible to stop it and start over. Or stop it and continue. When it seems to be okay, what I usually do is I'm checking all the PQs which have some sort of boost. Perhaps with satellites I could have allowed even deeper cuts. 
So for subwoofers, first I see that there are some PEQs which are boosting at the very edge at 200 Hz, but uh, perhaps not such a big deal. If I would see some boost at the very bottom, let's say at 18 or 20 Hz, that one I would simply delete, not to stretch subwoofer further than it can go. When I decided to stop, what I do is I'm going to copy the shared filters into the individual filters and delete it from a shared filter. Because uh, SHD doesn't seem to have shared filters, I can just copy the same filter two times. Then I look at the abbreviated filter report to see some stats on the gains and delays. Here it's useful to use rearrange gains or rearrange delays. If you press multiple times on rearrange, it changes from one configuration to another, so you can always press rearrange again and come back to where you started. The idea with gains is I want them to be set only on subwoofers. And for delays, if there is negative, I want it to be under shared filter, and then one will be usually positive. We'll see that when I enter it into a SHD plugin. Okay, now I have shared delay, minus 17 milliseconds, and one subwoofer which has positive delay. Then I export PQ text files for MiniDSP for each channel. Just naming it so I can easily find it afterwards. Because I'm using crossover PQs, I get an extra text file for xo.txt, which goes into a crossover. In my case, it's only for subwoofers, because main speakers do not have so many PQs. Now I have everything saved. One, two, three, four channels. I go into the SHD plugin, connect, switch to config2, that's where I want to put this in. Notice that everything is on zeros, routing is correct. So I take the shared delay negative value and add it to the main speakers as positive value. And a positive value from a subwoofer goes to the subwoofer. When it comes to gains, here's a bit of a problem because Mini DSP supports only up to plus 12 dB. So here I'm going to do a bit of a math to subtract 5 dB from the boost here and instead cut the mains by 5 dB so that in total. I have the same gains without exceeding plus 12 dB on the subwoofers. So end result is the same as MSO requires. Remember that I'm going to use Dirac afterwards to smooth it out, so even some a bit crazy values here should not be a big issue in the end. Then we go into PQs, Advanced, Import, and import the correct file. It's important to check that it's not bypassed. For subwoofer, I also already add second order shelf to be able to boost base, similar to Harman target curve. So at 5 dB it looks like this, and I set it back to 0 dB gain, so it does nothing. 
it's just a placeholder for me to come back later and uh, adjust again. I do the same thing for the other subwoofer. Now for crossovers, it's not possible to import directly, but you can copy paste the contents of the .txt file. Here by default is bypassed, so it's important to press a button to actually apply this. So this should be it. The PQs are loaded, gain is set, delays are set, and routing is set to normal. The next thing I did was verification of just MSO simulation in practice. I set up Umic X again to the same spot. It's, it has been moved since the previous uh, measurement. And uh, as you can see from this verification, the result is not exactly as was seen in the MSO. I'm not sure why there's a difference. Maybe I did something wrong, but that's what I've got. It's close enough that I'm happy, but um, it could be better. Because of these discrepancies, I really see it necessary to run Dirac after MSO. I did some experiments running Dirac before MSO, but I never got the same results out of MSO as it showed in the simulation graphs. So this looks good enough, and this is without Dirac at all. It actually looks a little bit too good. Again, I don't know why. That's what I've got out of this simulation. So the last part of this MSO optimization is to run Dirac. And I'm going to quickly run over Dirac calibration just to look at the graphs I got. Because what we see here is what the speakers measure after MSO optimization. Now both subwoofers are working together with the left and right speaker. And this is only two-channel Dirac calibration. So Dirac is not optimizing subwoofers separately. So in the target curve, I try to extend the curtain so that it does not create any bumps or boosts at the edge of the frequency response. For example, I don't hear very high frequencies anyway, so I don't want to boost tweeter more than it wants to be, naturally. This is a default target curve, which latest version suggests. It seems to be quite close to Harman target, but it can also be adjusted afterwards. Now, after I'm finished with Dirac, I use the same Umic 1 with the same calibration file to do a verification run in Rev. This is going to be a single point measurement just to see if we get at least in the main listening position, the same result as what Dirac promised. So as we can see, the end result looks pretty good. Perhaps there are better ways to optimize here and there, but this is the main workflow which I'm going to stick with for now. As I mentioned, this is just a video log for myself, but if it helps someone else as well, that's nice. That's it for now.